Welcome, everybody, to the Speaking Up with Patrick Schilling podcast, the podcast that aims at expanding your horizon. You already guessed it. My name is Patrick, and I just love, love, love having great conversation with amazing people. So, bear with me as I present to you amazing speakers whose ideas may truly change your life. Okay, in this week's episode, I'm talking to Jonathan Guckenberger. Jonathan studied fine arts at Berlin's College of Fine Arts for a couple of years before he moved on to pursue his passion in filmmaking. He now studies film and political science also in Berlin. Jonathan published his first movie earlier this year and is working on his second movie right now as we speak. So naturally, we talk about the medium of film, how it differs from other elements of arts, in particular the fine arts. We talk about the process of creating a film, and he describes how, in his process, an idea that he has would sort of merge with the technicalities of filmmaking. We speak about his own work, where he recently made a film about a conspiracy theorist. We speak about the audience-centric approach he felt is more inherent to film than to other mediums. Before we shift the conversation a little bit more to the meta level and talk about the relationship between politics and film, raise the question if film should be political. We then talk about Netflix and the impact it may have on film, film perception, film consumption and film creation. And lastly, briefly touch up on differences in film between cultures, specifically Hollywood and European film. Jonathan is an amazing and frankly one of the most well-read and outspoken individuals I know. So without further delay, I present to you my good friend, Jonathan. All right, everyone. Welcome to today's episode. I'm here today with one of my oldest friends, Jonathan. We went to high school together, actually, before we parted ways. I started doing my thing. He started going to Berlin to study and live there. Jonathan, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, Let's do the payment first, okay? <laughs> well, I, I promise I'll uh, I'll transfer it to you, but this is non-equitable as we uh, as we discussed. But uh, maybe next time you can get some. I'm not kidding. Here you have five euros. <laughs> Thanks. Well, Jonathan, it's been quite a while since we have uh, kind of talked for a bit longer period of time. So tell us a bit. What have you been doing over the last couple of years? Uh, yeah. What what do I what I was doing? Um, I definitely changed my subject, so I was uh, studying uh, fine arts before, and then I changed to um, film, science, and uh, politics, um, which I'm doing actually right now. And I'm still working like on personal projects, so like um, feature films. Uh, I did one in January, uh, and right now I'm working on a script and a screenboard for uh, the second one which I try to finish like next year. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yeah, and mostly I'm just working like with my new subject. So like it's mainly, it's it's more more film science and uh, less politics. Okay, interesting combination though. Like what made you intertwine the two of them or what made you choose that particular set of topics? I guess like firstly it was more kind of a personal interest. Mm -hmm. um, but I still find like the or I still think um, that the combination of film and politics may be not that uh, strong nowadays but more kind of like if you get into film history there's like or there always had been like a special interest uh, in film or like the, the medium film and uh, film production uh, from the side of politics mm. and there were a lot of like um, eras or um, kind of like um, periods um, where politics always try to to intervene or uh, get into kind of like um, films so like right. not not right not not right away like um, film producing but um, for example like uh, in the states uh, a famous example might be like um, the production code like a Hayes mm. code um, and under McCarthy uh, and stuff like this and that's something i'm working right now on so like um not uh not uh, specific the production code um in the us but uh more kind of like the german example mm. for it what would be the fsk mm -hmm. so like a freiwillige selbstkontrolle mm. um so like the um, 
it, it would be self, like the self control of right. um, film production and film industry, which was uh, which was uh, placed uh, in in the GDR uh, in the fifties or like since nineteen forty nine. And there was like a strong connection between politics, mostly uh, like um, politics made by Adenauer and the CDU, uh, but also a lot of like um, Christian uh, church policy mm. uh, intervening in film industry, mm. for example. Yeah. And how is that? I mean, that is obviously, I mean, especially uh, considering some country histories like Germany might be a, a bit of an outlier there, uh, where, you know, the country has a bit of a sp more special relationships toward the the interrelation of film and, and kind of politics. But, I mean, it's obviously, you know, wherever you are on this planet, and I would imagine our listeners are uh, from several countries, but how do you how do you kind of view that uh, interrelation between film and politics? I mean, there are several, you know, opinions being voiced from uh, a, a film being a, a medium that c can or even should convey political opinions to something like mm -hmm. maybe film should be something that should be entirely free of political influence especially when you know instrumentalized from uh, a series of, of different stakeholders what's kind of your take on on the the interrelation there mm, i would start like with uh, an internal point of the medium film itself mm -hmm. because like it it, it is, so like since the beginning of the 20th uh, century so like when film mostly got more like uh, into mass production or mostly um uh, into like uh, a bigger publicity um, there was always the point of film being a medium which has a strong impact mm. so a strong impact on a really uh, low level like it 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 was really easy to to to, to consume to to uh, affirm to to get into so like just take yourself as a uh, as an example uh, it's it's quite easy and obvious to to watch a movie so like mm. you you can you can get in really really easily compared to for example uh literature or mm. yeah i mean like a specific kind of maybe more elite liter uh, mm. literature but um so like that there, there, there was always this kind of combination of um it's it's easy to transport information throughout like uh, visual uh, throughout a visual uh medium and on the other hand it was always really hard to to uh, montage and make films mm. so like produce films and like the whole the whole uh the whole working process of making a film is really complex mm. and um therefore it was always kind of like an interesting topic for example for uh politics or for like um for like um getting a bigger cultural impact mm. uh into into a uh, society or just like even like simple human communities to create some sort of like narratives or mm. understanding of certain things for example there were uh, there, there was a there was a huge interest in uh, u.s policy in making war movies mm. throughout like uh, from yeah 40 44 or 43 till even like 46 47 in which they definitely tried to to reunite like uh, uh, a nation or uh, to um, prevent a certain human capital to to go to war mm. but it's not even like in the it's it's not just uh, in the states so like it's just an example um, for the special interest of uh, politics in film to for example create certain certain image uh, a certain imagery of mm. Uh, the nation, a certain imagery of like the needs of of mm. the people, a certain imagery of the people themselves. Mm. Um, so this was a huge point, and I mean, it it it, it got a little bit um, less interesting. So like throughout uh, throughout the coming up of like different kind of new medias. Mm. Uh, I mean, like the whole discussion about um, how media works. So like since the last. 10 to 20 years mm. and even now like the whole discussion about how polis uh, how, how, how pol politicians actually work together with uh, media or not work together with mm. media or s simple like uh, call it fake news or whatever <laughs> um, 
it got more out of like the film context mm. but it is still kind of uh, interesting for me because like you still find um, videos and films and uh, some sort of information combination and mm. information montage uh, in every kind of um, media uh, transfer of, of, of information. Right. And uh, I mean, interesting that you mentioned it because you yourself, you actually, as you mentioned in your brief intro, you have created a film actually, and you've uh, done that while you were still studying more the fine arts aspect and it then kind of went into your you know formal uptaking of like studying politics but at the time when you were kind of filming or when you were creating your first bigger piece of, of opinionation or of expression of kind of the, uh, the, the the things you want to convey how did you how did you go about in translating that how did you take the the set of ideas that you had and combined it with kind of the technocratic um, you know elements that that surround the making of a film. How how, how is that process? Uh, how, how does that work? I guess it, it wasn't that complex uh, <laughs> as I as I would say it is for like film history because okay. like uh, the things or the thing I made back then, like when I made the first when I made the first movie, uh, was like uh, really easygoing. Mm. So it was like I was coming more from like a conceptual art and video art, installation art background, mm. and even before like um, yeah, painting and sculpturing, mm. and um, so like I the, the the biggest impact on 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 my work was mostly like um, what kind of production set I have. So like it was <laughs> it was mostly like one camera <laughs> and one guy I was doing the movie with. Right. Um, but still, it was kind of part of somehow a concept because mm. I. I was making this movie about uh, this uh, this figure I founded, so like a fictional figure which was based on like some some yeah like uh, YouTube channels mm. uh, of conspiracy theorists, right. and I was working like with this background for a while, so like for one and a half years, mm. and then I mostly decided to make a film out of like the whole working process of making installations and videos and pictures and stuff like this. And so it wasn't mostly like, um, yeah, so like in the whole organizing process, uh, process of the ideas and the information, I got to the point like, okay, I will do a movie. So like, it, it's the best way to do a movie. But then I was thinking about like, how would a conspiracy theorist uh, dis would, would describe himself in mm -hmm. videos? And that was mostly the part of my whole work so like to 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 look at the self rep uh, representation of uh, conspiracy theorists because i thought there might be the point of interest getting closer to the to the topic of conspiracy theory mm. because like uh, I, I wouldn't say that there's any any theoretical content in it but there's a kind of interesting point when it comes to self rep uh, representation of people filming themselves or mm. um, creating their own narratives and their, their, their own uh, like paranoid uh, uh, view of the world. Mm. And so I thought about getting like this kind of uh, narrative more into the film production. So like I was thinking about how can I make a movie in a specific form? So when I say specific form, I mean like a, a form a conspiracy theorist would think about. Mm. And that's that's why it definitely worked out for me to do it just like with one camera and mm. one guy <laughs> and uh, to, to, to montage and put in like a lot of uh, different uh, found footage, video footage mm. like from, from online platforms and stuff like this. So uh, this will change now. So like when I'm working on a different subject, so like when you're thinking about the, the next movie I want to make, it's more making a movie and it's more mm. thinking about making a movie mm. and how can I produce a movie like um, within my context and in with within my, my, my needs and within my uh, opportunities mm. when it comes to technical devices, for example. Right. Or money. So, or, or money, uh, probably in particular. Uh, so you kind of... Like you, you, you described kind of that that change, and you know your first project kind of being, being something uh, that would have allowed you to kind of just explore a little bit, like sort of you know from that viewpoint, and then convey something to a set of recipients that might, 
you know, uh, either take your ideas or reject them. And now in your second project, once you've kind of after, after you've kind of explored all of that, you're really starting to think a bit more about, you know, the the formalization behind behind the process and in the way that you're that you're actually going to plan it through, that you're going to, you know, maybe write like the screenplay or script it up front, or is, is that sort of the evolution of your own work, uh, how, how that how that is going to be reflected in the, the pieces of art that you're going to create? I hope it's evolution and uh, <laughs> I hope it's not a piece of art. So okay. I, I definitely want to make a movie and so like it's a different kind of discussion to talk about if, 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 if a movie is kind of like a piece of art. Mm. But for me, there is kind of like... Um, a different reception of a movie than, for example, like uh, pieces of art. How so? How so? Huh? How so? Uh, elaborate on that a little bit, because mm. you've you've obviously you've experienced both. Like you made sculptures, and now you went into movie. Like where is the divisive kind of line uh, b b between the two of them? I would say it's 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 less, uh, or like in a, in a nowadays context, it's it's less uh, didactic, uh, less less mm. uh, uh, didactic. Yeah. Uh, to to make still to to make a movie yeah. so like um you, in a movie you try to to be as simple as you can so mm. you try to to uh visualize things in a simple manner to like um to 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 reach someone to reach someone to to understand like a story for example or for uh, reaching specific information so that's kind of the point i was making mm. earlier about um, right. movie or film as a medium which can be consumed in a really easy way, mm. but still it's quite complex to do it. Right. And uh, the thing about making art for me, and it's mostly yeah, like m my opinion on it, right. uh, it was um, that you could create like a lot of uh, complex stuff, mm. which could be consumed by you right <laughs> and some other people studying with you yeah and uh, but mostly you had to add certain information to to give the key to right. some kind of a work for example like in conceptual right conceptual based works and I still find it more interesting to combine like a complex set of informations and feelings uh, with an easy or a simple uh, way of, of visualizing to, to, to reach people to, to recite it. Right. So, okay. So that's, that's interesting. So the, the one thing is, is the sort of from the recipients and where, you know, it's always easier to just go to the, the movie theater and watch a movie or to turn on TV uh -huh. uh, and like uh, watch a, a series or even to like more modern medias of like, let's say, you know, online streaming, Netflix or whatsoever. Whereas, you know, it takes more time, dedication and also like more intellectual commitment maybe uh, to, you know, read, I don't know. Uh, like a 400 page book but what about you know the creator's perspective like did you feel you mentioned the the you know the aspect of your art being kind of consumed by you and by the people that you studied with but what about your personal commitment like did you feel more absorbed almost by you know the the, the sculpture arts you created or the drawings you made than with the movie because you know i mean one and a half years of kind of you know intellectual evolution that led you to that movie seems like a substantial uh, c commitment of time so how is it kind of for you as the creator to be like in that world to to create the characters to become the characters maybe like how, how does that feel for uh for you as the as the creator hmm how does it feel? Um, I mean, I, I would say like the uh, good thing for me in doing a film is um, that I think more out of the position of people watching the movie. Mm. More than in creating like, for example, an installation. Right. So when I was doing, for example, an installation, I was really so like in the whole working process I was more distracted because like I I, th I thought I, I was working on yes I, I mean like uh, I was working on my content and mm. I want to make it really complex because like the whole thing I was working on got more complex and got kind of like uh, out of my reach mm. um, so it never got to the point where I was thinking okay so like I created kind of a form mm. in which this whole uh, uh, this whole 
complex process of creating uh, can find its place. Mm. And in the process of doing a film, I I definitely have to think, or I, I naturally think more about like people watching the thing, mm. and I, um, I, so it's it's easier for me to get to a point where I find a form, or, or I, I I start with a form. I start with the form of like a, a, a visual communication, mm. and um, it's a point where it always can come back to so like when the whole thing got too complex or when i got too sucked up by it mm. uh, i can come to a point where i have to think more and more simple so right. i have to i have to think about like kind of an overlook yeah. to to how how do people uh, recognize this so like or how people can get into it so like what's what's the formal effect of it and in installation of art for example it was more like um how can can I can I manage the space I have or mm. yeah like depending on what kind of exhibition you're in so like it, it was more like uh, temporal based and space based and these were kind of like the the factors uh, I was thinking most of mm. and not like uh, how to people or how do people react on it or how do people uh, um, get along with it or not get along with it right. Um, but I think it was mostly like my part of it. Mm. I wouldn't say that it's just based in insulation art or the spe specific form of it. Um, but I would say there's a difference even in, in reception if you go to, to an art space and you have a certain expectation of what you see. You see art mm. uh, and um, you have like this background um, within you think about this piece of art so mm. like you know it's art because it's like in this kind of specific art space for right. example and um you reach different people right right so like when i reach people i don't i don't know like or if i reach people yeah i i, I can't say it now but um and i thought like in a movie or creating a film it's more easy going and that's mm. for me uh the definite better way Right. Well, it, it seems from all you, you know, you, you describe, it just seems more on the one end accessible for people kind of uh, to, you know, just be the recipients. Uh, but then also for you as a creator, it seems to provide you with kind of this more, you know, uh, fixed structure within which you can kind of, you know, have your your ideas evolve so it, it makes absolute sense uh, to, to to kind of listen to that uh, now when you you know we, we've talked a bit about the kind of the form or the, the formalization of the the medium film um, which is you know as of 2018 uh, in, in, in a state of, of disruption in the way that, you know, you got all those film festivals in Cannes or, you know, at other places that have traditionally been kind of the mecca of, of uh, f film re recipients uh, that are now, you know, all of a sudden being faced by, you know, all the the uh, the streaming uh, services from Netflix to Hulu to YouTube to uh, even Facebook or to people you know, just uploading Instagram stories that other people would watch for hours and hours and hours. So what's kind of your, as a, as a filmmaker or as a future filmmaker, what is kind of your, your take on that? Like, where do you see film, you know, headed if, you know, I mean, people just <laughs> sit down at seven at night with like a big ass pizza and like some Coke and just watch like 10 episodes of like the same serious mindlessness. Like, is is, is that kind of still... Uh, the 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 medium of quality film that you as someone who creates uh, those pieces would like to achieve or, or how do you where, where do you see film headed in that regard yeah I think definitely is kind of like an old ongoing problem so like um uh, for example you have uh, this uh, specific European ideology critique coming like from the Marxists uh, um, or Marxist uh, cultural theory, like from the 60s and uh, or even 50s, 60s, 70s, um, in which kind of like, for example, Hollywood was the main target right. uh, of um, of being like uh, in a certain way throughout the medium film really uh, manipul uh, manipulative um, and yeah, like like was uh, um, 
taking the the consumer's choice uh, or um, even like creating just one specific uh, aesthetic for example mm. so like just creating like one specific aesthetic uh, imagery on which people can refer to uh, and so like uh, you 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 got a real big mess uh, right. of of um, losing diversity in in expression of, of feelings and uh, cultural codes and symbols whatever um, so like this is definitely like um, one point where you have to think about um, even nowadays so like um, is there kind of like a, a, a monopoly uh, on um, on like a, a monopoly process ongoing like within uh, the participation of Netflix in the traditional festivals whatever so like um, or not in the festivals themselves but uh, like on a, on a free market so mm. like um do they get more attention because it's uh, easier to access it's easier to to uh get like um get like a whole bunch uh, of of movies to 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 watch it um or uh, are you losing quality are you losing diversity or on the other hand is it like um for example like television um a potential to to uh, d d democratize uh, like um, the whole the whole watching process, right? And um, so, like, mainly throughout the question of uh, accessibility, um, and I would say uh, that there, there, there must be like more uh, uh, cooperative form between uh, traditional traditional film branch, like. Uh, or film festivals like like Cannes or Venice or uh, Toronto, whatever name it, uh, and uh, streaming portals, for mm. example. So it must be just like the way in which both of them kind of like are are each other's target. Right. So like it, the, the the traditional way of film festivals might be kind of like old fashioned in some manners, mm. and uh, but still might be a, a, a potential of future quality right uh and on the other side uh, netflix for example might even be a potential of disrupting power or uh future potential but um also could be um could be old-fashioned or traditional right. in 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 their mechanics or so like or in the mechanisms they using to 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 reach uh people or to stream movies whatever and uh, I would still I, I would still say like for, for example in huge and even like uh, monopoly uh, uh, structured uh, streaming portals like like Netflix uh, or Amazon whatever right. there, there's like one point of um, of capital monopoly mm -hmm. and uh, and its role in like a free market or right. in a free market movement of like a, a film industry and the other point definitely is like um how does it structure like a, a watching culture or how yeah. does it structure like um the feelings or um the, the the imagery of um uh the whole the whole the whole mass i, I would say mass because like mm. mass is kind of like um a word used in the whole Hollywood discourse and stuff like this and I, right. I would say there lies a potential in it a positive potential uh, to reach like a mass uh, of people so right. like, to reach like a really really uh, uh, maybe even diverse mass of people and the question is like with with what kind of content so like with what kind of content do you reach them um, and there might be like the whole discussion about uh, or that they lies the whole discussion about quality so like like what kind of what what is f filmic quality mm. and i would say uh in a way it's not the european and and uh yeah somehow uh elitaristic um mm. uh opinion of quality so like high cultural quality and it's not just like the the entertainment low culture hmm. um it's I, I, or i hope it might be kind of like a, a mixture so like to 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 really 
combine certain content, combine certain imaginations. So like like from different kind of social backgrounds. Mm. And therefore, I would say something like Netflix is a really great medium. Mm. And you so like these are not just like like my points. Mm. I mean, like there was a whole uh, the whole discussion about um, American film and, and Hollywood, uh, mostly in Europe in the 20s and 30s and even ongoing like till till the 40s. Uh, was kind of like exactly this this kind of uh, opponent uh, discussion I, I I try to 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 sum up. Mm. Um, so like you mostly got the people of uh, really disregarding and uh, hating like American film mm. and Hollywood and uh, like uh, like cheap pictures and low culture and uh, mm. uh, so like uh, people got disturbed and distracted and stuff like this and there was like a really interesting sort of uh yeah german and european intellectuals which definitely had to move and got to exile in 33 because they were mostly like um yeah like it doesn't matter like more like kind of marxist and uh mm. left-wing theorist and uh, mostly like uh, sociologists uh, sociologists and uh like um for example like krakauer walter benjamin um and they came up like with the whole idea of uh being a little bit so like like facing the whole problem uh, in its complex uh, com complex structure and in its uh, with 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 its difficulties um, but be or like to, to face it really um, or to to try to face it like it is within the whole social structure so like what kind of fun function has Hollywood cinema for example mm -hmm. Uh, in as a, as a social function mm. and therefore there, there were a lot of like great theories for example like cinema is a space actually a space uh, where a lot of like low-class people could could meet or for example uh, in America um, uh, at the beginning of uh, modernity uh, in, the, in, in, in the 20th uh, century um, where, where people like with different cultural background uh, could come together uh, for like really one 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 togetherness for like mm. one uh, for like one uh, imagination they, they they could share for right. example right. and um, but also there was there was this 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 huge point which for example Krakow made that um, therefore it it really depends on the content you're screening like mm. like what are your what is your intention uh, what what do you like to show or what do you like to to effect with a certain kind of movies mm. because like the negative side of, uh, of the effect i was uh, talking about or he was talking about was for example like german propaganda cinema mm. or propaganda films right. which was really orientating uh um uh, or had had its uh, main orientation like on on the american film like in a formal way mm. um to to reach people uh and to reach a mass of people uh, but uh, yeah, like in a negative way. So like they had a content which was uh, so like I, I guess we all know what what uh, the content was. Right. Um, so like I, I wouldn't say it's that easy. And to come back to the whole Khan and and uh, Netflix uh, thing, I think it's really stupid to 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 target each other. Uh, so it it would be really helpful in the whole discussion to take a look at. Uh, the, the the movies which are made and, mm. and, and if i take a look at netflix for example i would say they have their own productions but i wouldn't say like these productions are um kind of comparable to to the traditional uh right. traditional cinema or traditional film quality if you like to say it because the goals are completely different i mean they're i mean from from the beginning of creation i guess like their their target would be to kind of reach this accessibility through the platform and to you know they're they're designed their movies not to you know be successful at con maybe a, a small portion or in toronto or wherever maybe a small portion of those movies might be but like the underlying intent uh, for them is to kind of provide the entertainment we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier but uh i'm, I'm, I'm curious and in, in maybe in, in another thing um you know you or do you think that this entire movement towards like mass consumption of the the, the art medium film also provides a bit of space for 
a new, you know, high quality realm of film that has never been reached before, where only those who really appreciate the medium film would actually, you know, go to the theater uh, and where you can, you know, portray maybe a bit of topics that are, you know, more intellectually challenging or more, you know, cinematographically challenging than, uh, you know, in the in the you know, mainstream film. Like, do you also perceive it as an opportunity or? Um, I would, firstly, I would say it's hard to talk about mainstream film because like uh, it's, I would say if you talk about the mainstream, it's really complex. So it's like really, there are so many different sets of production and, 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 uh, and uh, imagery and um, yeah, like, like formal, um, even like, even like uh, if, if you take a look like at, at the basic, uh, uh, production for example of bbc production mm. film productions there were like uh people working for bbc in the 70s they made like really great uh experimental movies mm. but not in a way that they were uh consumed as experimental movies they were mm. like movies screened by the bbc mm. and uh that's that's what i hope for that's what mm. i hope for for example like for netflix uh to say like okay we have kind of for example like uh financial background or a base on which we can uh, use this or use our material base and use our um, uh, accessibility to 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 reach people without telling them that's high culture mm. or that's low culture right. or uh, that's high quality and but to be more specific on your question i would say like the the possible future for like what you what you tell like high quality cinema um is for me a little bit yeah yeah i i would say it it gets more and that's quite sad but it gets more into a direction of uh, fetishization so mm. like um you you will go to the cinema or you will you will uh you will take a look at like uh, pictures in a cinema um, out of like a specific interest for example a scientific interest uh uh, or or because you like this kind of uh, romantic attitude mm. uh, towards uh, cinema. Um, and I, I say it's a little bit sad because I think the whole idea of cinema being a space and being an actual space where people come together and have mm. like this uh, watching or viewing experience together in one space um, is kind of like a, I wish I have. Mm. Um but even there, I think it's it's not necessary to divide the whole thing, mm. like the whole thing of cinema and Netflix. I right. mean, like, why can't Netflix also be uh, uh, a production company mm. for, for example, cinema movies? Right. So, um, which is which is something they're they're already trying, and you know, I mean, some documentaries as Icarus, for instance. Yeah. I mean, they've been very well perceived, and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, whatever way this is uh this is going to go I'm, I'm happy that we'll have you know minds like yourself working on it um so i'm I'm afraid you know at this point i mean there was a famous german tv show called vet and dust some of our uh, listeners might know where at the end always someone had to catch a plane <laughs> and yeah. therefore yeah. Uh, they had to cut it off a bit earlier in this case i actually have to catch a plane so i'm afraid we'll have to stop it here but jonathan has been an you know it's been an honor to have you on it's always great talking to you and thanks so much and good luck with all your future projects i'm sure yeah. we'll we'll hear a lot of you thank you so it much it was it was definitely a pleasure and i hope i was not uh talking too much into the void <laughs> not at all my friend thank you very much